Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another learning video. In today's video we are going to be talking about the digestive system. Our digestive systems are controlled by the autonomic nervous system, and we know this because we don't think about digesting our food, it's just something that happens automatically in the body. Different animals have different digestive systems which work at different speeds, and those speeds depend on their metabolism. So for example, a dog has a pretty fast metabolism, and it only takes them about eight hours to digest their food, whereas Gary... <laughs> Gary uh, is perfectly content only eating about once a month, whereas your dog would be very upset at you if you only fed them once a month. <laughs> the first step to the digestive system is the mouth, of course, because that's where you start eating from. So in the mouth, enzymes are produced when you start chewing, um, and these enzymes start the digestive process, they start to break down that food. Now, if you were to bite into an apple and try to swallow that one bite whole, it would not only hurt really bad, but it would be very inefficient for your digestive system because those enzymes can only cover the outside of it. So, so when we chew, we're breaking our food into smaller and smaller pieces, and that's so that the enzymes can cover a greater surface area and it's much more efficient for them to start digesting. After we've chewed up our food, we swallow it, and we do this by constricting our pharynx and our esophagus muscles, um, which pushes the food into the stomach. Once the food enters the stomach, it is surrounded by gastric juice, and what gastric juice is, is <laughs> it's a mixture of hydrochloric acid, mucus, water, and an enzyme called pepsin. And what pepsin does is it breaks down proteins into amino acids. The mucus acts as a barrier to the stomach lining. It helps to make sure that the acid does not eat away at your stomach lining. And the hydrochloric acid helps to break down the food pieces into smaller and smaller pieces. Um, and once this whole process is done, uh, the product is called chyme, which if you've ever had a stomach bug or food poisoning, you are <laughs> very familiar with what that is. Next, the chyme moves from the stomach to the small intestine through a sphincter. And at the beginning of the small intestine, it's called the duodenum. And this is where the small intestine secretes bicarbonate, which neutralizes the stomach acids. So it's no longer dangerous to have in your body. The main function of the small intestine is to absorb nutrients. And it does this through tiny hair-like organs called villi. And villi absorb nutrients because they have capillaries, uh, which allows them to absorb the nutrients into the body. The small intestine also secretes bile. And bile acts kind of like dish soap on a greasy pan, um, how it breaks down those fats and oils. So the, the bile is going to break down the fats and oils into fatty acids, and monoglycerides. And next, after all of the nutrients have been absorbed out of the chyme, it moves on to the large intestine. And the primary function of the large intestine is to reabsorb the excess water. And after the excess water has been absorbed, what is left is then excreted from the body. Thank you guys so much for watching, and make sure that you turn in your note sheet to Google Classroom. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Bye!